Well, Disney bought Fox, huh? It's the end of the world. Disney bad. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Don't get me wrong. I understand that monopolies are bad, and Disney buying up a bunch of stuff is not exactly good. Whether it's the growing power, the jobs that are lost because of this, a refusal to allow various movies to play in theaters. Basically, there's a lot to not like about this. But there's really not much a boycott can do in the long run that wouldn't hurt other things. If, say, we boycott Marvel's The Eternals, we send a message that diverse films are bad. That wouldn't be why we boycott, but that will be the takeaway. This of course isn't to say you must watch diverse films you don't want to see. It's just an example of how bad the situation is. Monopolies are bad, but hey, movies like Black Panther and Coco can empower audiences who are rarely heard. Disney shouldn't be allowed to buy everything, but that doesn't erase that I like things from them. Sometimes it's complex. Well, now that they own Fox, let's see some random films from them. They've got to offer some different things from Disney, right? Well, unlike Disney's Marvel heroes, Fox has done Zorro, the famous Spanish hero who has been in various films and shows, like the Disney one. Well, this is different. From the get-go, this is played up as more of a comedy compared to previous incarnations. But while some jokes do work, most jokes just do not. And this gets worse as a little more than midway into the movie, the film's title comes into play. It's a big homophobic joke. Yeah, gay blade isn't meant to be the old meaning as I first thought. It really is a long homophobic joke. Maybe not the most offensive, but aside from it just not being funny, it's just insulting that the parody angle becomes, wouldn't it be funny if Zoro was gay? After Zoro breaks his leg, his brother shows up and must don the Zoro look, resulting in gay jokes. Like like how he wears colorful costumes, or uses a whip instead of a sword, and says gay things. I guess I should go easier that at least they never go all in with the slurs, and Zoro does genuinely love him, never pushing him completely away for being gay, but yeah, it's still a long gay joke. Plenty didn't work before, but once you mix tired gay jokes, it just becomes a big mess. And what sucks more is that they didn't need to do this. A Zoro parody was fine on its own. Sure, this one isn't doing a great job of it, but surely they could have done better than double down on insulting a group of people. Oh, and yeah, it's also not the greatest on race. Not terribly insulting, but a lot of Zoro features weren't great about casting the right people for the setting. So I'll let it kind of slide, since it's not exclusive to this version. But yeah, race is an issue here too. Ah, uh, let's just move on to the next one already. No, not the Eddie Murphy one. This follows Rex Harrison as the title character. Goes on adventures, misunderstandings, you name it. And they even sing. Yep, this is totally not like any Disney feature at all. So this is probably the most infamous of the movies I'll tackle this week, possibly even for this year's January of Suck. It was a massive flop in its day, it was known to be constantly recut throughout its run in theaters, merchandise was made and wasn't a success, and above all else, it is known to be a horrible, horrible movie. And it is! When I heard this had its fans and was a cult film, I had hoped that maybe it would be charming, maybe people were too harsh on it in its day. And nope, it really is as bad as they say. Some might blame the episodic structure. Structure. Others might blame the odd choices the film makes. Why did they do the seal scene like this? Is he marrying the seal? Isn't it a pity you're a seal? <laughs> but simply put, it is a long, dull movie. None of the songs land well, a lot make little sense to even happen, and the performances range from kind of quirky and interesting to just annoying. Admittedly, I do kind of like Rex here, but beyond that, I was just bored. This reminded me of the old live-action Disney movies, but somehow even worse than the ones I've seen. And oh, look at that, more racist caricatures. I mean, it's not the worst, but I don't know, it still just feels wrong. Not helped that a lot of the native people look like they were painted darker. I could be wrong, but they certainly look like that. Look, the movie is well-intentioned on how we treat animals, but it just feels so bad. Especially considering one of the plot points is Doolittle selling an exotic creature to the circus. Like, you'd think the guy would know better. Not to mention the Doolittle one its subplot takes up a lot of time for essentially no reason, but to give an excuse to pad this out. It's dumb and I'm getting sleepy just picturing it. And just like that, we got the best movie of the week. The annoying thing is, it's still not good. Now admittedly, this is the one movie I remember seeing as a kid. I didn't remember much else beyond the cute punchline of the film, but fans who have given it somewhat of a cult status made me hope it'd be good. It is not. Look, I respect the more mature channel of the film. I think the animation is mostly good, but the pacing is never right. The story is nothing special. Some of the rotoscoped animation, at least it looks rotoscoped, feels too stiff, the CG has aged badly, and the music... is so annoying. It feels dated on the movie. Look, I really want to like this one. Titan AE was the final theatrical feature from Don Bluth. 
But it's a gigantic mess. As said before, the CG is bad. Not helped that the villains tracking our heroes down are awful looking blue aliens. Eventually we get a double crossing and then a double cross on the double cross. But the first double crossing is eventually redeemed and... Why was there so much double crossing? I don't know, it was silly padding. And look at that, even this one has some stereotypical imagery. I mean, it's the future, are these clothing styles really necessary? Anyway, the biggest offense is that the movie is just dull. The leads have dull voice work, the journey's pretty simple, with the threats never feeling as threatening as a story like this demands. And even the love just feels like the movie is just checking off a list of requirements to be considered an adventure film. Though, to be fair, there was a concept for an intriguing adventure, and the occasional designs and chases does make this slightly more entertaining than an unfunny gay joke and an incredibly boring and overlong family film. So, my biggest surprise here is how all three films have some not so positive imagery for different races. Okay, fine. I'm not surprised the Zorro movie had them. But the others, how? Why? It's baffling. With Zorro, this is a new territory. We've had white actors portray the hero. I don't care if you say Spanish men can be white. Well, that's true. Not just any white man can play Spanish men. Even more so when Zorro is in the period where Spanish California would become Mexican California. So, I was originally planning to ignore Zorro in this part. But then the others have to have their caricatures. So, fine. Let's discuss a bit on this. Obviously, we shouldn't be surprised that older movies feature racist caricatures. They're from a different time, but technically E isn't that old. So this is still a topic that needs to be addressed because racist imagery didn't end when we pointed out that the Dumbo Crows weren't culturally sensitive. They're still alive and persist. And before the Morons show up, yes, I understand that these movies don't intend to be harmful. Titan AE's Asian characters help our leads and don't do anything really offensive. The natives in Dr. Doolittle are portrayed as smarter than originally seen, but that doesn't negate that the visuals used to identify them as different from our heroes is built on what they'd be viewed as stereotypically. Sure, different cultures have different styles, that is true, but there's a difference between dressing people as they normally would be and dressing them a certain way to make sure the audience understand they're not white. Why do these people dress like this in the future? For their culture or so that we know they're Asian? Hell, the female lead is Asian though played by Drew Barrymore, so I'll let you decide what to feel there. And yet she doesn't dress like this at all, but she does have that streak of color in her hair that we always see on Asian characters. So. Why go all the way when we meet the Halfel refugees? Sure, in real life there are some people who will dress in the clothing of their culture more often than others, but again, when we see it happen here, it doesn't feel like it's made for respect to the culture. Do little is probably worse here. I don't know if I can confirm it, but some of these natives look like they were just painted darker. And while we do find out that they are civilized, thanks to white people if I remember correctly, they still end up falling back on racist tropes. It's for a longer stretch than Titan AE's racist business, as well as a lot easier to pick up on, so I imagine this has been discussed by others a lot more. Funny enough, the biggest issue in all three films is that they're all so dull. Gay Blade isn't funny, so it's just got long stretches where it's just noise until we hear something homophobic. Dr. Doolittle is never as charming as it thinks it is. And Titan A.E. mistakes mature tone for an excuse to avoid being a compelling adventure. I'd say Titan fares best just because there is an interesting idea at the heart of it. It's just never taken advantage of, right? That having been said, Zoro and the Gay Blade would be the one that I'll probably remember the most just because of how insensitive it gets on the material. I don't really think Disney buying Fox is for the best. There are loads of negative things that can, will, and have happened. But for what it's worth, as someone who barely has power in these things, I do like seeing The Simpsons alongside Disney stuff. I am curious to see them play with the X-Men. And we might see some better care for some nostalgia properties. That doesn't negate the bad stuff, I know, but what do you want me to do? Life is already miserable as it is, so if I can enjoy some things while acknowledging other things are bad, why attack me? I didn't okay this stuff. And the only thing I can do is that I hope it's not as bad as we expect in the end. Probably will be, but I have no control over this, making me feel bad about what I watch won't make Disney sell Fox back. Besides, now you can remind Disney and others they now own shit like this, as well as other movies like the ones I talked about for a good laugh. See? Not all deals come with entirely desirable content. 